I'll cover a little bit about the swine options and what we have available there um, in, the, in the program itself. So in the swine section, uh, right now it has five sections or options that you can pick, as Joe kind of alluded to in the layout. We have uh, in swine a nursery production phase, uh, a grow finish, a gestation facility, lactation facility, and a gilt isolation facility. And we're in the process now of adding a wean to finish uh, scenario which or facility option which would combine the nursery and the grow finish portion. Uh, so right now you have the first five options uh, and we're adding a sixth which is wean to finish which has become probably one of the most popular ways of housing market pigs uh, in the swine industry. So I pulled up a screenshot of uh, some scenarios in my section of the FNMP and so the first one is a Purdue test herd uh, farrow to finish operation. Uh, the second one was uh, getting ready to start testing the wean to finish scenarios uh, with an example which is pretty common is a 4,000 head quad facility where we have four 1,000 head rooms under one roof. Uh, and so uh, this is what pops up uh, currently as you look at what I've got in the scenarios under my name and my login. So I want to walk through just a little bit uh, this feral to finish operation and what you might look like depending on your facility. Uh, so in this case we have, I've added facilities for step one is your first part of this uh, scenario. And so I've added in the farrowing barn, a gestation barn, uh, which is breeding and gestation together, uh, a nursery facility, and then grow finish barns. I lumped all the barns together even though there are uh, three separate uh, grow finish barns in this facility. You can see down below, you can uh, add more facilities if you want to divide things up further. Uh, or, or you can remove those by with the trash cans and, and changing things back and forth. After you've identified your facilities and what you have in the, in the structures, then you click on, uh, in this case, swine uh, on the, the round buttons. As I mentioned earlier in the, in the previous slide, the five that we currently have is nursery, grow finish, gilts, which is gilt isolation units, uh, breeding and gestation, and lactation. Uh, so you click on which phase you're working with um, and submit that, and you'll get to the next section, which is, is below that. And so now you can see how I've got all of my facilities there, and I've identified my, my source of, of animals in each of those facilities for the farrowing barn, the gestation barn, the nursery, and the grow finish barn. Um, and so they'll all come together if you have a farrow to finish operation or a breed to wean operation or you have multiple facilities or multiple sites. Uh, under this scenario, all your, your buildings will be lumped together into that one page. Uh, and then you can click on any of these to expand them uh, or contract them. So. As the grow finish section, I'm going to bring that up to show you just how that looks when you first try to enter the information for the grow finish barn. Similar kind of information comes up for every phase of production. So there are defaults that populate uh, and come up. So in grow finish, as an example, the default is 1,000 pigs in the facility. Uh, entry weight is 45 pounds. Exit weight is 275. Dressing percent is 75. I'm going to turn this facility and grow finish two and a half times a year. And my average carcass uh, percent lean is 55%. I want to explain just a little bit that you, as Joe mentioned, you can modify and change any of these values. Uh, and the equations will then adjust what the requirements for those animals growing in the basis of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are. <clears throat> and so if we have a higher percent lean animal, it's going to have a higher protein requirement. It's going to retain more nitrogen, as an example. Or maybe we have slightly different slaughter weights. There are a lot of producers that are now marketing around 290 to 300 pound pigs. Uh, so you change that exit weight. That will change the total duration of time possibly in your facility, but it also changed that composition of that animal at the end. And the equations will adjust for that. Uh, and so the, the information is critical to put in to make sure you get good information back out. <laughs> The next step, um, so you can see at the very top of this screenshot, 
the percent lien is there from the right above, the information of the individual pigs or the group of pigs that you are marketing out of this grow finish facility. The very next section is the feed information. And you can add as many diets as you want or that you use in the facility. Um, and this part, you have to populate uh, all the information as it comes up uh, when you enter the feed side. So I've entered four grow finish diets evenly spaced, each with four week time periods. Um, and so the total time in this grow finish facility in this case would be 16 weeks. And the feed intake is something that you must uh, know or at least have a fairly good idea what your intake is for every diet phase because that's the multiplication factor along with the animal numbers to know how much nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium those pigs are going to consume uh, during that phase and that period. And then this is all summed together for the whole grow finish period uh, at the end. And that's what will calculate then the manure, nutrients, and solid summary uh, to be produced. And you'll get an estimate, as Joel just showed you, like the poultry example, by each phase, how much nutrients are generated, uh, say for grower one, grower two, finisher one, or finisher two, and then overall. The so step three in the manure stand uh, side of things, of how do you uh, then decide where your manure is going? So do you have a two or three cell lagoon system, an above ground slurry store tank, a uh, deep pit, which is probably the most common, uh, semi-solid scraped and, and held under roof, uh, single cell earth and storage structure. And then right below that, you can see the next section. We've we're added in a bedding section. Uh, so those folks that actually use hoop structures or uh, different size structures, like uh, some of the producers still use some, what we used to call cargo units where it's deep bedded, uh, solid concrete floor systems. Um, so the bedding option comes into play, as Joe mentioned earlier in the beginning. Bedding is an input. It comes into the farm, uh, and it changes the composition, but it also changes that budget and the economics of the facility. And so we, we have a bedding section on this manure section, even in the swine, uh, if you use a hoop structure or a deep bedded kind of system, um, which is becoming a little bit more popular in some cases, uh, especially for the south. So I just wanted to take a few minutes uh, at the end here just kind of explain that there's a lot of things that impact on the swine side, uh, nutrient excretion, land application, and, and profitability. Um, of course, the key ones that focus in on this particular uh, activity related to the FNMP is tied to dietary changes. So as you change your nitrogen, your phosphorus, uh, potassium, <clears throat> excuse me, or dry matter digestibility, it all has impact on what's actually excreted uh, and what you then have for land base and land base needs. In addition, the performance of the animals. Uh, I didn't uh, show you in great detail, but I did in the grow finish section, you know, the percent lean, carcass yield, the days that they're actually on performance or on, on the facility makes a difference in how much nutrients are excreted. The story structure determines nitrogen losses uh, and evolutions uh, that come out of that facility, and so you know what you have then for land application tied into the cropping system and what crops you're going to use. So I'm going to give you just a couple examples. If we look at uh, some research published out of Europe and look at just the finishing phase, so the last couple of months prior to market, uh, sometimes those are single phase systems. Uh, I showed you an example of a two phase diet for those last two months prior to market. Um, they can go to a three phase, or if we maybe even consider using a lot of synthetic amino acids, the maximum amount that we could possibly use, you can completely change that nitrogen excretion component of the pig. So the more phases we have and we feed, the closer we actually meet the biological requirement of the animal while it's growing. Uh, and the second point is that we can decrease the nitrogen input on the diet side by using a lot of synthetic amino acids. And synthetic amino acids have really increased use as we've used more and more byproducts uh, in diet formulations here in the swine industry in the last uh, five to six years. But there are some huge possibilities that can make major changes in, 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 in phosphorus excretion uh, and while we diet, formulate our diets. <clears throat> Another thing that most people don't think about is that uh, the feed efficiency side impacts the nutrient excretion uh, out of the facility. and so. For every uh, time we can improve feed efficiency a tenth, we can decrease the feed consumed of those pigs by 21 pounds uh, and therefore reduce the dry matter, nitrogen, and phosphorus excretion from those pigs. 
Similarly, if we can use technologies or health status changes that change the number of days those pigs are fed those different diets, um, it's almost a one-to-one -one relationship in reducing the amounts of manure generated by those pigs uh, related to a five to 10 day drop in, in days to market equates to four to nine percent reduction in manure excretion. So it's very similar to a one-to-one -one relationship. And so either a more energy dense diet or maybe it's a processing side uh, that improves digestibility, all those things can improve the feed efficiency uh, of the facility and the pigs. And I'll give you just one example uh, on the feed processing side. Um, if we look at the bottom of the table, uh, at uh, particle size around 1,000 parts per million, uh, excuse me, 1,000 um, micron size, I uh, misspoke there, sorry, 1,000 microns, the diameter digestibility is about 84, and the crude protein digestibility is a little bit lower at about 79, uh, along with the energy digestibility, and the feed efficiency is about 1.9 in, in these nursery pigs. As we reduce that particle size closer to the 700, uh, or below 700, you can see improvements in dry matter digestibility, which is one of the inputs you have an option for when you're doing your diets. So those changes in dry matter digestibility changes the efficiency of utilization, your feed efficiency, and so these things all can impact nutrient excretion on the pig side. Another example I just want to touch on is something that's very commonly used here in the last uh, five, six years. It's a lot more uh, distillers grains with solubles in the swine industry and most people do not realize how much more unutilized nitrogen there is with the dry distillers grains. And so I just put a quick table together showing a grower pig and a finishing pig um, and how much the nitrogen intake and excretion changes relative to the phosphorus intake and excretion uh, within the use of the distillers grains. And as we go from using no distillers grains to 30% distillers grains, which is very common in the industry today, 30 to 40% in grow finished pigs is, is very, very common in the industry. We've almost doubled our nitrogen excretion. And that comes into a big economic consideration and land-based regulations consideration because while we may have reduced the cost of the diets, we may have exceeded the land base we have for nitrogen-based applications. Uh, or we may have to change our cropping system. And so tying nutrition, excretion, and cropping systems together with the economics is really critical when we start evaluating some of these byproducts and how much we use in some of our formulations. The last slide uh, that I want to uh, just show you quickly is, is a common uh, inclusion rate of using the first four synthetic amino acids of lysine, methionine, threonine, and tryptophan. And Comparing that low crude protein diet to a standard corn soy diet with only uh, two pounds of synthetic lysine in it, um, nitrogen retention represented by the blue bars is very similar between these pigs. So this is an, uh, from our data where we actually have uh, 24 manure pits and we actually measure collections and nutrient excretion uh, and we ground pigs to get whole body compositions. So the, the nitrogen retention is very similar, uh, but the excretion represented by the red bars is reduced by 38%. Uh, and that's using just the four most common synthetic amino acids that we can purchase today uh, relative to only a, using the synthetic lysine at a low inclusion rate we used to target as very common 10 years ago. And so in 10 years, we've probably reduced nitrogen excretion substantially uh, if we just use synthetic amino acids within a corn soy based diet. One other technology we use uh, quite a bit in the swine industry is uh, rectopamine, also under the trade name Paline, and it has a lot of benefits. Um, it increases average daily gain uh, and lean gain of the muscle tissue accretion in the, in the pig, uh, but we have to increase the dietary crude protein in those last three to four weeks we feed that product right before slaughter, um, so you have kind of a counter effect that you're feeding more nitrogen, more phosphorus but they're putting most of that into lean tissue deposition. Um, we also then, as a positive for the nutrient excretion side, reduce the days the pigs are in, mar in the facility by four days, which decreases the manure generation, nitrogen, and phosphorus excretion. Additionally, if we can tie some more synthetic amino acid use with the paline, there is the possibility during that last 21 to 28 days we could reduce nitrogen excretion by up to 36%. 
So you start thinking about technologies we can tie together uh, on the nutrition side to minimize impact or to tailor a nutrition program to help facilitate the fit of that facility with the land base uh, becomes pretty clear. And so there's a lot of possibilities and a lot of technologies that we have to think about from the nutrition side. And hopefully this tool will help us evaluate a lot of those things.